<laughs> Greetings, boys and gits, and welcome again to Dread War Gaming. Now, before I get started with the namesake of this uh, video here, the GW paints the dropper bottles and dealing with old paints and all that malarkey, I'd like to uh, just introduce this little fella. Another awesome model from Hardcore Minis. So you might have seen my aptly named previous video, Hardcore Knob Injection, diggity. That was actually a video about the previous model that they teased that they, I've already pre-ordered, which is the uh, Lobo style knob. As somebody pointed out to me, it's actually themed off of Lobo from DC Comics. Awesome. So I'll probably paint him up with a sort of Lobo theme in mind. But this guy here, he is actually Mad Grax, just like Mad Max. And as you see, he's got the, um, the face guard, the mouth guard there. Really, uh, really cool. Love it. Awesome model. Um, and it's really going to fit in with the theme of my ults because my ults do have a sort of Mad Max theme anyway. So this guy's going to definitely be one of my war bosses' main retinue, one of the bully boys, something like that, you know. I absolutely adore it. I can't wait to get my hands on it. Hopefully it will come along with the other one because I've had a word with the chap here um, that's producing these models. He's out in Russia. Um, I'd like to showcase as much of his stuff as I can because I'm really loving what he's doing. He's, he's amazing. The sculpts look, I mean, the designs at least look amazing. I can't wait to see the quality of the resin when it comes out, how well these details actually are going to transfer. But I, I, I predict good things for this company and um, I'm looking forward to seeing more from Hardcore Minis. Anyway, moving on. Okay, so you might be asking yourself, why would you even bother transferring your GW paints to dropper bottles? I mean, what's wrong with these little paints? I mean, they're quite pretty, aren't they? And they've they've changed the design of them through the years just slightly, so surely they're, they've thought about these. These are good, no? No, unfortunately not. There's a real problem with these, and I'll demonstrate it with this one paint that I have here. Now, this one is one that is, is no good anymore. It's actually, it's, I've just shook it there, but it's, it's really given up the ghost. Around the edge here, you'll see, if I bring it up to the camera there, there is some paint around the rim. Now, that is unavoidable with these sorts of paints, because once you shook them up and you lift them up, the paint oozes down, it goes everywhere, it ends up in this top lid section here, dripping her down and it gets when you push it down you'll always end up with some paint there now you can try your very best with a, a cloth with some um, thinners or something like that to try and keep these clean as you go I've tried that trust me I really have um, it's not practical it takes a lot of effort and you still end up with paint there and you still end up with effectively what happens is is because the paint is stuck there air is able to get in through there because the bottle isn't making an effective seal from where the paint is the paint is porous enough to let air in air gets in and eventually your paint separates dries goes manky and horrible basically it's down to the pore design of the bottle and this can be really a just a simple fix for gw if they were just to put their paints in dropper bottles and i don't know why they don't or maybe i do know why they don't but this is this is good resale um, technique, really, because every time GW come up with a new bottle, a new paint range, a new name to their paints, whatever, they release a new paint set. And I've bought them a few times like a sucker too. And each time we have this same problem with the paints drying out, so the pots aren't all that good. Um, so I personally will always transfer mine into dropper bottles. But there's no point in doing that straight away. If you rush straight into it, you're taking a fresh paint and you're pouring it into your dropper bottle, you're going to end up with some paint left over in that GW pot. So what I suggest you do is use or transfer only those paints which you are about to be using for your current project. So say, for example, I am painting a whole bunch of orcs and I want to start with wire flesh, for example, right? If that's what it's even called nowadays, right? And say I put wire flesh is the colour I know I'm going to be using for a couple of miles. I will take that bottle and I will pour it into the dropper bottle. Then I will label the dropper bottle up and so, so on and so forth, as I will show you. But then I will use the paint that's remaining in the pot for 
whatever work I'm doing there and then because that way I can really scrape every last little bit of pigment out of that pot so that then when I'm throwing away the GW pot it hasn't got any paint in it and that's half the problem with a lot of people when they do this process if they follow these videos that other people might have put out there um, they are setting themselves up to be thrown away or wasting quite a bit of paint and you might say to yourself oh okay now what I'll do then is if that happens I'll save that little bit in that GW pot and I will use it well unfortunately because it's such a small amount it will dry out very 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 quickly trust me so uh, I have tried that too so what I'm explaining to you guys here is tried and tested all right this is the technique that I found to work best so make sure that before you um, transfer your paints into the dropper bottles that the paint that you're about to transfer is one you're about to use and use the paint from the old pot not from the new dropper bottle first that's part one so what will you need to do this well I'm glad you asked that question I'm about to show you so of course dropper bottles you need to buy some dropper bottles now you can buy these from many places I would recommend um, some of the hobby stores like hobbymad.ie actually do like sets where you can buy the the dropper bottles with the lids and the shakers and all the bits and bobs all together as a kit or you can go on to eBay or uh, Wish or one of these sorts of places and pick them up but basically what you're looking for is 15 to 20 millimeter bottles because ideally 17 millimeter if you can find them because most of the companies out there AK Interactive Fantasy and Games, um, Vallejo, everybody's favourite, uh, Scale Colour, uh, Warfront, one on the floor, they all are in 17mm bottles, dropper bottles. Um, I think mine are a little larger, the ones that I've actually, I'm actually currently using. So, yeah, they're probably more like 20. Anywhere you're happy, I mean, between 15 and 20 there's going to be very little difference in the size of the bottle so get yourself some bottles ordered up now the next thing I would recommend is when you're ordering your bottles there are lots of different color lids that you can get I actually recommend that you do get a few different types of lid because as you might have noticed there are different types of paint so I tend to use the red ones for example for base layer paints heavy paints paints that are highly pigmented and I'm going to use for base layering or that just it just signifies to me it's a basey paint a thicker paint and then for the airbrush paints i will use a white lid that signifies to me air it's a white it's a light one the blue caps i use for sundry stuff so actually as it goes one of the other things you're going to need is flow improver and i actually pour flow improver into a little dropper bottle to make it easier to use um and then for standard layer paints i would use the black lids and so on and so forth so you can color code by the lids it actually helps a little bit um so there's a little pro tip for you secondly you're going to also need some oh you're going to need some balls all i have in this world is my balls and my word and i don't break them for no one you need balls in this game man um now AK Interactive do some great balls actually, stainless steel balls. These are really good. They're a bit pricey, they're about fiver for a pot. You do get lots in there and they don't rust in your paint, which is a problem. You can buy, I've got some much, much smaller stainless steel ball bearings here that I have tested and they're fine too. But sometimes you might get some steel balls which aren't particularly stainless. And what happens in that situation is they end up rusting inside your paints and obviously that's going to destroy and deteriorate your paints, not give them the effect that you're looking for. So what I suggest you do is when you get hold of your ball bearings from wherever you get them from, leave a couple sitting inside of one of these um, empty pots with just a little bit of water just lapping over the top of it and just leave it in there and just see what happens if it starts to rust or not. Um, it's worth doing that little test before you go chucking a load into your paints and, and, and potentially ruining them. Luckily for me, I've not had that problem. The balls that I did use were stainless steel, so mine were all fine. Um, so that's your bottles, your lids, your ball bearings. Your, your bottles should always come with the little uh, dropper caps. They should, they should standardly come with them. 
But as I mentioned, you also need flow improver. A flow improver or flow aid or uh, even Lahim medium or whatever it is from GW is pretty much the same sort of thing. Um, there's lots of different ways you can get it, but the cheapest way is to buy it in bulk. So Winsor Newton do these big large bottles like this. This is 250 milliliters. Uh, and Liquitex also do large portions. But these uh, Winsor Newton ones are actually quite handy because you can pick these up in most art supply stores. So most places that have a college nearby probably have an art, or if you've got an art student's college type place, they'll have an art supply place around and they'll probably be at a decent enough price too because of students. So, that's another little pro tip. So get yourself those. Also, another thing you're gonna need is some gloves, for sure. You're gonna want yourself some latex gloves because this can get messy. On that point too, you're gonna wanna get something to cover your desk with. So get yourself some old newspaper down or something like that. And some paper towel, because you're probably gonna need that too. Now, it is a messy job, like I say. There is one thing that a lot of people would recommend in their videos, but I don't recommend it myself, which is pipettes. Pipettes or even syringes. Either way, waste of bloody time, mate. You might think it's clever, and they have their uses in, in this to some extent, but don't be trying to use them to be removing all the paint with and think you're gonna do a tidy job of it. A, you're gonna fill this with paint you can't remove, and so you're going to go through a hell of a lot of these unless you want to cross-contaminate paints. They're not all that bloody effective either. Uh, they are, of course, difficult to clean. And you waste just as much paint, man. It, it doesn't really... If you if you are able to... I don't see what the problem is in pouring straight. You know, like I, I sometimes I've had the problem where I have accidentally poured it. It's gone down the side of the bottle. But as soon as that starts happening, you stop pouring. You know, you don't carry on and pour more. You just stop figure it out gets you know usually if, if you're having a problem when you're pouring the paint it's because it's too thick so you're needing to add more thinners now one of the other things i will say as well is if you're buying these to be adding to your bottles so that once they're in the dropper bottles you can give them a good shape and it releases all of the pigments that might be stuck in the bottom great idea but don't just limit it to that use these in the process of shaping up your old gw pot because once you've poured out the good paint and you start adding your flow improver to shake it around and loosen all those other pigments, what better way to do that than adding a couple of the ball bearings? So what I tend to do is I put a couple of these small ones inside of the GW paint, shake it around, shake it around. And it's at the point that those ball bearings do finally drop out because sometimes they get loose and lodged. I remember how many I put in I look for them to come out, and if they don't come out, I know I haven't shook it enough. It's still still got something holding the ball bearing in there, so there's still sticky pigment, so I need to you know keep working it. So that's a few little observations before we go heads down and have a little look, which we should do about hmm, probably now. So we're going to work today with this Wild Rider Red, which is actually more of a sort of an orange, really, to be honest. But first thing we're going to need to do is give it a very vigorous shake. Let's crack on. There are two other things that I didn't mention that you are going to need here, in fact. And they are a pair of cutters, because we're going to have to trim these couple of hinges here at the back. So we're going to snip them off, like so. That just allows you to take the lid fully off. But before we do that, we're going to have to give it a very vigorous shake anyway. The other tool you're also going to need is going to be a hobby knife. Um, and that's a very sharp, fresh blade on a hobby knife. And that's just to prise this label off very gently and to not cause it any damage. But it, I usually trim the label here and here anyway because don't need all this gumph on the back, all this rubbish. Don't need that, just need the label. So that's why I use the knife also for that. So a pair of scissors even might do the job. But anyway, let's crack on. Step one, vigorously shake. No, no, more than that. No, no, more than that. No, no, more than that. Anyway, cracking on. When you're happy that you shook it a fair bit, pull the cap back. Like so. Ah, oh, yeah, it's fairly runny, but I can see that just by looking at the uh, paint in the lid there, at the drip rate of it, that paint is fairly sticky in there so we're definitely going to add some flow aid right away just to help this 
actually so don't be don't be scared like go go as heavy as you like really it don't matter if you almost bring the paint up to the top a little bit I mean at the, this paint was sitting at sort of this sort of level here so I've just added flow improver up you can see it sloshing around in there see so now we're gonna put the lid back on but before we do as I was explaining before I've got some little ball bearings in here so I'm gonna add one two three four that'll do we've got four little baby ball bearings in there close the lid and give it a really vigorous shake really vigorous I'm gonna do this off camera turn it upside down of course as well give it a really good going and just make sure you've got that lid on proper because I've done this before with the lid not on proper and believe you me that can be messy next I've got the paper towel handy because this is where things can go wrong and can get messy and this is where I'm gonna eat my words about the pipettes and the syringes <laughs> but no no seriously trust me right I'm not liking the way that's looking Let's go for this edge here this is very hard to do on camera there we are that's all going in the bottle hope you're getting this on camera hope my hands not in the way right. Right, so as you see now, we're coming to a dripping point. Flip. Right, at that point where it's dripping, what's left in this pot now is very sticky. Um, the runny pigments are in here, and they've got the flow improver in them, and you see, for how much there was in the pot, we've already got about the same amount of a full pot just by adding that flow improver. So now we're gonna add some more flow aid into here. And we're gonna repeat the process. So. Uh, do a little squirt of that, yeah, let's dip it in there. I might actually put now one of these larger AK ball bearings in, because this is really going to help get the loose pigments out, and it is actually a very sticky paint, this one, believe it or not. So, and it's only a layer paint. Now, one thing I should have really mentioned before I even got to this stage is removing this label is something I would probably advise before you even go empty in the paint. Because to be honest, if it's in this kind of clean condition already, why dirty it up in the process? So be wise, remove that first. Don't do as I'm doing here and doing it afterwards. But you'll see the process anyway. Just remember to do that bit before this bit. I'll do it with the next one so we don't get too confused. Okay guys, now shake. Shake it, shake it baby, oh yeah. Now then, let's go for our second pour in. Did that. Right, let's see what we've got. I'm going to use a clean edge. There's a cleanish edge there. Right. And oh, oh, oh no. Oh no, Artie. He's gone and done it. Ta da! This is what can happen. This is why you're trying to film. It's very awkward. Well, this is what the paper towel's for, you see? There you go. That's what happens some of the time. To be honest with you, you'd already got most of the paint out of there. These pigments, okay, they've been lost. Now, this on the table here, if it's really tight, which I am, you could actually reuse this paint, and in an ordinary circumstance, I actually would. But in this circumstance here, I'm gonna have to just mop it up. But this, this really, this, oh, this kills me. Oh no, wasted paint. Uh, 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 uh. Oh dear, I'm gonna lose sleep over that tonight. All right, let's try again. Let's try and be a bit more. Oh gosh, man. Okay, that. As I was saying about style and finesse before I started this, you know, I don't see why people can't pour straight. <laughs> what's wrong with people? And anyway, that's what's wrong with people. Exactly what I just demonstrated. So. One little thing you can do now is because this bottle is, it's got a bit of paint around the edges and stuff itself. Other than making an absolute mess of this one single piece of paper towel, what we do is we get another piece of paper towel and we just get a little bit of that flow improver. So that, why not? Because I've got no, um, no white spirits or no anything else like that around. Just give this a little wipe. 
with the with the flow improver there. See, coming up nice and clean. I just want to get those paint residues off because it's just even on these small dropper bottles, it's not going to make as much of a difference as it does on the GW bottles, but still keeping things nice and clean will prevent them from getting clogged and dirty just like your airbrush so now there's so very little left in this now don't know if you can really see but those few loose pigments down the bottom there i usually would be trying to get these out too so it's just a little bit more flow improver a little bit more shaking which i shall do off camera and then we're going to get this label off which i've actually dirted up but i'll clean that up show you that stage two right so let's try to do this again i'm left-handed by the way so i'm doing this right-handed which is making this more difficult for me but it's the only way i can do this for the camera right so now what's left in there gets used for your current project What's in here gets sealed up and used once that old one is used up. So this will be a nice new new one. I'll get the label on it in a little while. So I'm going to drop the ball bearing in there because that is a rather sticky paint and I don't want to get sticky again. There's one in the bottle. Pop a little cap in that ass like that. See that? Now this is this can be messy if you don't. There you are. Sometimes they don't want to push on very well. You end up squashing the bottle, squeezing paint all over yourself like a ketchup bottle, which is basically what these are miniature ketchup bottles, isn't it really? So, like I said, black lid because this is a layer paint, so standard. Okay, lid on, looks good. Give it a little shake. Yeah, it's looking beautiful. Right. So next up, we're going to take off this label. Okay, for this step, you're going to need a nice sharp hobby knife. So this this whole process really, I mean, if I was gonna recommend it to somebody like Six Plus Steve, I would suggest maybe just get a marker pen and write it on there. This this step might not be so well advised for some people. No. So we're just gonna get the edge there. See, I'm not gonna use this back part of the label, so to me it doesn't matter if that edge gets a little bit ruined. Right, pull that back. Off comes the label. Now you see there, there's some orange on the label. That's where I've let the paint run down the side. And that's why I'm saying to you, it's better to do this process before you actually go pour in any of the paint. So with the label actually still being held kind of on there, I'm just going to snip it. So I'm going to take line across oh it's hard to do on camera line across there somewhere and then on this bit across there god so it's difficult to do on camera right somewhere around about there we'll do fine i'm not being too fussy at this stage um like i say a little bit of flow improver on uh piece of tissue will help wipe off any old paint that was held on that label that is a fairly wonky label for me but there you go i'm doing it on camera so there you go guys there is one layer paint transferred into a, a dropper bottle with a shaker in it now oh i'm ever so sorry to have bumped the camera there but now when you're using these you just push down screw the lid off which is held fairly well on this one really Right, so now you've got this nice pinpoint. Now, sometimes you will get a blockage here, but you can just stick a um, a uh, paper clip or something like that, or a needle down in there. But this allows you to then just use just the amount of paint that you want, and you can put it on a palette or a wet palette. Much, much easier than the standard GW bottle. And these bottles do encourage this old school technique, actually, of when they've got this hinge on them, that you pop them up and you sort of use the paint in this reservoir here, which is great for beginners, sure, but as you get more advanced, you realise that that is not the best best thing to be doing. So this is the way to go, guys. Right, that one. Into this one. No gloves. Oh, better. Right, let's pour this into this. 
Well, I got that much so far. So, I would obviously then put the label on, put the lid on, all the, all the steps that we did with the previous one. I just want to show you just another one quickly. So, moving on just briefly, we have a really old paint. Check this one out. Can you guess what it is? It's Dark Angels Green. Now, I can probably tip this upside down and nothing will come out. Although, actually, well, yeah. Yeah, nothing coming out. It's got some moist lookingness to it there, see? Some moisture in there. But I'd say, if we just get ourselves a little stick. Here's a stick. Yeah, it's actually a... Uh, what do you call it? Japanese eating instrument. That's what they're called. Chopstick. Right, there you go. Actually, that's that was that's fairly rescuable. You know what, guys? I've got some dark angels green, and it's savable. So, scrape off this stick. Save as much of that paint as we can. We don't want to lose it. God, wow, this is cool. There's a very good chance that we've got some dark angels green, guys. Next stage, add some flow improver, of course. Get some of that in there. Now, these pots, obviously, they don't have a label that you can remove quite so easily. Or they, they have a label, but it's not one you're going to like on your bottle so much. I don't bother with them. I've rescued a few of these already, and when I do, they end up looking a lot more like this. These are unshaken, but they're basically, they don't have, oh, that one does have a label. I lied. That one's a foundation paint. One of the old school foundation paints. But this one is probably something like snake bite leather from one of these old pots like this one. So it doesn't have a label, but it does have a shaker and it does have plenty of flow improver. So that can be shaken up to a usable. I mean, I wouldn't go using it on your best models. You know, these old school paints, the pigments are not going to be great. So still don't use them on your best models, but still great for this and that, you know, so just experiment around with them a little bit first, what I'm saying, you know, get them on your wet palette, play around with them, see what the pigments are doing. We'll talk about that in another, in another episode, another day, but that's that, and that's what this is going to go into. So, this is going to receive the vigorous shake treatment too. Now, yeah, see, the, the size of this cup here compared to this cup here, the pour rate is actually going to create, I'm very sure it's going to make a mess. So this is one of those circumstances where a syringe is going to be useful. In this instance, I couldn't actually find a syringe. And although I do have pipettes, I'd like to show you something else you can do. Because the amount of paint you're going to lose inside of a syringe or a pipette is, is only the equivalent to the same that you'd lose on the inside of a... If you cut yourself a nice little triangle of some sort of laminated paper, and you, you make yourself... Just bend it over. Make yourself a little colander. So... A little pouring instrument. There we are, see? So just tuck that in the bottle. Nice and snug. Now we pile the paint into there. Not a problem. The funnel, we'll funnel it into the bottle. Slower than we want, but there we are, it's going. There's a few thick bits in this paint. Once that's in this bottle with some flow improver and the ball bearing, which looks like it's just on the edge, there it is. That's going to be difficult to drop through. Right, that's going to get receive some more shake in that paint to get the more out of that. Let's go for the second pouring. Oh, not taking it off like that. Oh, we were unscrewing it. Of course. Yeah. Right, it's more dark angels green for the pot. Lovely. Now, I love Dark Angels Green, so I'm certainly going to use this, what's left in this pot, this little little bit that's left. It's very little, but there is some. And what doesn't pour into this dropper bottle, I'm going to be using. So I'm going to get some of that, all of that scraped out and use on a model right away, because I don't want to waste that. That's an old school classic. So. Next stage, now that we have poured the Dark Angels Green into the bottle, there's nothing on the outside, that's just run on the inside. Let's get rid of our little colander or funnel, whatever you want to call it. 
Right, it's already got the ball bearing in there from um, when I was shaking it up, so we're just going to put the, the cap in. There we are. Now this one is an old school paint, a bit thicker than the rest, I'd say. Yeah, I'm going to classify that as a as a base paint um, because the pigments are going to be old and blah blah blah, and it reminds me that it's an old paint and all the rest, and I need to treat it with a little bit of dignity, a little bit like the old foundation paints, although they're not as old, but. Yeah, there we are. Now this is a cool label maker that I really enjoy these. These are really old school. So you have to move the dial around. So we're going D, A. So basically you spell out what you want. So I'm gonna go Dark Angels Green. There's our label, lovely, lovely. So that edge is perfectly fine. This edge looks a bit naff, so we'll trim that there. And then on the back, it's got a little label, pull that off. Now these these are really cool old school little machines. I like them and they're nothing can go wrong with them as such, other than the little fairy inside telling you the wrong letters. I wonder now if that's actually gonna fit all the way around. Let's have a look. Oh, it's not going to overlap. I hope it's not going to overlap. Oh, no. Just about. Just about. There we are. Dark. Dark Angels Green. Lovely. There you go. And that's how I deal with ones like that. When I can be bothered. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, so that's about all I have to say about dropper bottles for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a little bit of a short episode this week, but I am working on a lot of different episodes at the moment, some of which are quite complex in shooting, which are including modelling and painting videos, which I haven't done videos on those before. And I'm finding that actually recording those to be a lot more challenging than just sitting in front of a camera talking. So I can't imagine what battle reports are like. I, I, all new territory and all very exciting, I'm sure. But this here video should fall into the Orc Central series. It's another one of those how to do something very simple, but very useful, especially for us Orc players, but this is useful for everybody, but yo, whatever. I'm going to chuck it in the Orc Central series. In the end screen, you'll find two other videos from the Orc Central series, part one and part two. Go and give them a watch. Give this video a like and subscribe, guys, because I'm close to 300 subscribers. And when I get there, I'm going to have something real special to be given away.